Hello grade 11s, today we work through some problems about friction. First, we need equations to calculate maximum static friction, Fs max, and kinetic friction, Fk. What determines how strong Fs max and Fk are? Remember that friction arises between two surfaces because the jagged points on the two surfaces hook into one another. The smoother the surfaces, the less the jagged points hook into one another, so the less the friction. So Fs max and Fk are affected by the smoothness of the surfaces. The smoothness of the surfaces depends on the material that the surfaces are made of and also how they have been treated. For example, polish can make a floor smoother. Something else that affects amount of friction is how hard the two surfaces are pushed into one another. The harder the surfaces are pushed together, the more the jagged ends hook together, so the more the friction. The normal force tells us how hard the surfaces are pushed together. Normal force is exerted by the surface and acts perpendicular to the surface. So Fs max and Fk are affected by normal force. How do we calculate each of these factors so that we can calculate how strong Fs max and Fk are? Each pair of materials can be given a number to indicate the level of smoothness for static and kinetic situations. These numbers are called coefficients of friction. The symbol for coefficient of friction is the Greek letter mu. The coefficient of static friction is mu s. The coefficient of kinetic friction is mu k. Here are coefficients of static and kinetic friction for some pairs of surfaces. Notice that very smooth surfaces like wood and snow have lower coefficients of friction than rougher surfaces like rubber and concrete. Also notice that the coefficient for static friction is generally noticeably more than the coefficient for kinetic friction for the same pair of materials. Fs max and Fk are also affected by the magnitude of normal force. You can watch the video lesson on normal force in this series for how to calculate the normal force. Let's now combine these factors into equations to calculate maximum static friction and kinetic friction. The maximum static friction possible in a particular situation equals the coefficient of static friction for the two materials that are in contact multiplied by the normal force which the surface exerts on the body resting on it. The equation for kinetic friction is similar, except now we use the coefficient of kinetic friction for the two materials. Right, so now we are ready to do some calculations. First with a horizontal surface and then with an inclined plane. A 4 kilogram concrete slab is pulled horizontally along a piece of rubber. We need to calculate the friction of force just before the slab starts to move and as it moves. First we realize that question A asks us for maximum static friction, Fs max, and question B asks us for kinetic friction, Fk. The two materials which rub against one another are concrete and rubber. So we find the coefficients of static and kinetic friction for concrete and rubber. These are 0, 0,9 and 0, 0,7. The mass of the body is 4 kilograms. So its weight is approximately 40 newtons. The body is on a horizontal surface. So the magnitudes of its weight and the normal force acting on it are equal. So the normal force on the block is 40 newtons upward. We substitute values into the relevant equations and we find that the maximum static friction for this situation is 36 newtons. And the magnitude of kinetic friction here is 28 newtons. Now let's answer a question about an inclined plane. A 4 kilogram wooden sled is pulled up a snow-covered slope which is at 20 degrees to the horizontal. 
calculate the friction of force A, just before the sled starts to move, and B, as the sled moves. So again, we need to find the maximum static friction between the two surfaces in A and the kinetic friction in B. The sled's mass is 4 kilograms and it is on a 20 degree slope. So the sled's weight is approximately 40 newtons. However, because of the slope, the normal force exerted on the sled is not also 40 newtons. This is because the inclined surface only reacts to the component of the sled's weight that acts directly into the surface, WY. So the normal force is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to WY. So we need to calculate WY in order to find N. The angle between W and WY is the same as the angle of the slope. This is 20 degrees in this question. So we find that WY equals W cos 20 degrees. Remember that the sled's weight, W, is 40 newtons. So WY is 37,59 newtons. And so is the normal force. The coefficient of friction between wood and snow is 0 0,08 for static friction and 0 0,06 for kinetic friction. We substitute values into the equations and find their answers. Maximum static friction equals 3 newtons. Kinetic friction equals 2,26 newtons. Notice that the answers for question 2 are much smaller than the answers we got for question 1, even though both had the same mass. There are two reasons for this. The sled is on a slope and the surfaces of the sled and snow are smoother than the concrete and the rubber. These differences make both the coefficients of friction and the normal force less and so Fs max and Fk are less for question 2. The last question we'll look at is still part of the question about the sled. Now we are asked how hard a person must pull parallel to the slope upward for the sled to move at a constant velocity. For the sled to move at constant velocity, the force up the slope has to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the forces down the slope. Two forces act down the slope. They are friction and a component of the sled's weight. Remember that we use the component of the sled's weight into the slope, WY, to calculate normal force. Now we need to know the component of W down the slope. We imagine the Cartesian plane turned to have its x-axis along the slope. Then the component of W down the slope is the x component of W. We call it Wx. Can you see how to solve for Wx? The angle, theta, between the slope and the horizontal equals the angle between W and WY. Wx is W sine theta. For this question, theta is 20 degrees. And W is 40 newtons. So Wx is 13,68 newtons down the slope. This means that 13,68 newtons of the weight's effect tends to accelerate the sled down the slope. Let's simplify our diagram like this. While a person pulls the sled up the slope, friction acts in the opposite direction to the person's pull. So friction acts down the slope. We've already calculated that for this situation, the magnitude of kinetic friction is 2,26 newtons. So how hard must a person pull up the slope to balance these two forces which act down the slope? The sum of these two forces is 15,94 newtons. So that's how hard the person has to pull up the slope for the forces along the slope to be balanced. The sled will then move at constant velocity. And that's all for today. You can get some more practice when you watch the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.